I love this. I saw this on, on, in a Starbucks down in Gower Gulch in Hollywood one day, and I thought, oh, that's cool. I, I, that's what I do. I do take comfort in rituals, like having the morning hot chocolate in my case. I have a drug problem. I can't deal with caffeine anymore, so I have to have hot chocolate instead. Can't do coffee. But the ritual of that is powerful. Uh, so here's a question. What are the sacerdotal functions of pharmacy professionals? Sacerdotal? I mean, all of you are priests or priestesses or imams or shamans. Each one of you, believe it or not, because all of you are part of the ritual system of medicine. And the rituals have great power. Are we conscious of those rituals? Are we shaping them for the benefit of our patients? There's a guy named Ted Kapchuk at uh, Harvard, and he uh, has drilled into this question of the placebo effect. Maybe you've heard about this. Uh, Kapchuk is the guy who figured out that it turns out that the placebo effect works even if you tell people that what you're giving them is a sugar pill. You tell them it's a placebo, but the placebo still works. It still has a positive impact on health outcomes. Why? Kapchuk says it is entirely the result of the ritual aspect of medicine. Think about that. What are the rituals of medicine? Spit it out. Tell me. You make a phone call to make an appointment, right? That's a ritual. You go to the doctor's office or the pharmacy, and you sit down in a waiting area. The waiting room is a ritual space. It is a, it is a masjid. It is a, uh, a temple. It is a church, right? Uh, then they take you in for the, to the exam room, and you put on a ritual garment, right? And then people wearing ritual garments come in and talk to you and prod and poke you. And then, at least in the old days, at the end of the process, the doctor pulls out the pen and paper and, you know, the RX and writes the prescription in unintelligible, mysterious ritual handwriting, right, and hands it to you. And then you take that, and that's a ritual, and going to the pharmacist is the ritual, the other half of the ritual, turning it in. Guess what? This, this uh, EMR thing, it's messing up the rituals, right? Now the doctor goes, blink, and it shows up in, on your screen. Well, something's lost there, right? Something that actually has an effect, and that's been something that, a matter of some research, actually, is the effect of losing those pieces of paper with the RX. That's a thing, right? So Patrick says the ritual aspect of medicine itself is the placebo effect. Now, how much do we think about this? How much do we develop this? How serious are we about creating effective ritual space? Now, Kapchuk has gone on to do fMRI on people around the place you know, with the placebo effect, right? And the science that he's dug up there is he's figured out, that he's found the uh, biochemistry of it, the neural pathway of the placebo effect. And he concludes, to his own dismay, actually, he's an Orthodox Jew, he's into ritual, he likes the idea of ritual, he thinks that's important, so he's kind of upset about this, but he believes that now that we've got the pathway, now that we've got the biochemistry basics, uh, we may be able to come up with a pill that mimics the placebo effect. Crazy. Someday you'll be dispensing placebo pills that actually have a drug in them, right? Crazy. Uh, because that's the logical consequence of having found the neural pathway of this experience. And he raises another tantalizing possibility. He says, we may be able to determine genom genomic differences and come up with uh, placebo pills that are uh, specialized for certain genotypes, right? And what goes with that is the possibility that there could be rituals in medicine that address particular genotypes. 
So for, for your genome, we do a certain ritual of medicine, and for yours, we do a different one. That's may, maybe where it's headed. Wild stuff, no? But what it points to is that rituals are powerful, the rituals of medicine are powerful, the rituals of religion. We don't know nearly enough about the efficacy, the health impacts, of, the possible health impacts of these rituals. I just, I happen to love this, this the idea of this passage in Hebrew scriptures, right? Uh, the prophet is told by God, go, eat the scroll, right? Eat the scroll. And he eats the scroll and it tasted sweet as honey. So this is a picture of, a, uh, of the scroll made out of uh, honey cake. So you can eat the, the uh, uh, you can eat chapter three of Ezekiel. Um, Self-referential. But the point is, we're we're going you know we're going places now with fMRI that into a world that we never thought of possible before around the efficacy of uh, religious and spiritual practices. It's going to be interesting to see how this goes through. And of course, think about the Eucharist and Christianity, right? The the uh, the wine and the bread, the body and the blood of the Christ. Uh, thinking of that as a sort of prescription, right? As a uh, uh, something that might have some kind of efficacy medically, uh, have some kind of health effects. Who knows? We don't have the science on that yet, but it's it's really rich to think about it. Uh, this is a place in New Mexico where you get holy dirt and uh, rub it on whatever part of your body ails you. Uh, part of the world of rich, religious ritual and practice.